Does anyone want to give us a count in? One. Thanks, Evan. You fucking nailed it. You fucking thanks, <laughs> oh. thanks, Evan. You <laughs> bastard. Hey. Right. One. One. Sorry. Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you a countdown. I'm okay. gonna give you a count in. Why did you sound like Forty two. Forty one. <laughs> Forty. Thirty nine. 38. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Off the Shelf Hobby Podcast for episode 7. Uh, I'm here <laughs> today, uh, Gazable Trades, and as always, I'm joined by. Come on, we just talked about this. You could. Who's just Jesus, talking guys, himself. Someone. Hello, I'm Evan. I was tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who's next. Is it me? It's I'm you. John. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Alright, I'm George. Nice I'm Alex. to meet you. We just talked Fantastic. about this, and we already looked it up. Yeah, I, I assumed it would be in the order of what's on the screen. No, yeah, because no, dis- we've was got a Discord. set overlay. We should follow clockwise. Yeah, I feel like the overlay was totally the way that we should have gone with well, that. Clearly, clearly, we didn't discuss this enough, then, did we? <laughs> no. That sounds about right. time to bring this up earlier. And I should, that, I'm no, sure no, someone no said, said that. do it via the Discord, and I responded with, that's wank. If not, I definitely <laughs> thought it very <laughs> strongly. <laughs> It's me, Evan You're... Rainer. Hi, how's it going, guys? Uh, Ev- Evan with the bad choices. Uh, and yeah, welcome back to the, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, episode seven. We did it. We made it. We made it this far. Uh, yeah. uh, with a couple of I mean, pre- a couple. We of pre- made it implies that people actually listen to it. Actually, I'll have you fucking know we have <laughs> listeners, sir. I was checking the stats. We have... Statistics. We actually have statistics. There's no point going into them because if we talk about them, they will all disappear. Mm. But we are just registering that we know you're out there, listeners, and we love you for supporting the podcast. As well as that, especially because speaking of pod, like of channel stuff, we put a fucking video out. That's not a podcast. Oh my God, we actually made something. <laughs> yeah, John fighting with editing software for the past two days, uh, and me trying to figure out how to speak properly plus evan mm. just actually being a very eloquent person is that the like word for me. it eloquent when yep. you're just speaking well yep. yeah uh yep. we actually recorded a how t- our first how to for the dark angels like off their back off the back of their ninth edition codex and that's now on youtube so if you look for off the shelf hobby uh on youtube or just search dark angels uh, how to play dark angels then you should find us Leave us a like uh, or a dislike and tell us why you didn't like it. Tell us, give us information we, so we can make this better. It's the first first attempt of a format, but there are many more on you the way. You know what? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say don't leave us a dislike. Just leave us a like. Even if you hate it, leave us a like. If they give yeah, if, if they give, if they give us a dislike, we still get put on the algorithm. And at least hopefully yeah, they yeah. tell us why. It literally doesn't hit us, hit us matter. I'm pretty sure, right? Is that how it works? Ring yeah. that yeah. bell. Ring that bell uh, for when at some make- point we upload. If you like list, Jeez. go to my t- go to the Twitter, and I've retweeted it with uh, a list that I made specifically after that um, that episode that we did as well. Oh yeah, that's actually we, we that's pretty cool actually because we had a good talk about the lists. Uh, but yeah, more videos mm-hmm. on the way. Uh, we're going to be branching into some Age Age of Sigma content soon. Uh, Alex is going to take in the lead on that because yep. I don't play enough Age of Sigma. Uh, and to... yeah, we're gonna be doing stuff. stuff. <laughs> Expect more in March. But apart from that, I think we should talk about some fucking toy soldiers today. Because that's, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's all this is. What we do every, every single week. week. Every week we talk about toy soldiers. Um, Because there are some new toy soldiers coming out on the weekends. Or at least the pre- pre-orders. It is the pre-orders, isn't it? Oh my god, yeah. Stuff. Yeah, forgot about this somehow. Um, and we're probably going to talk about that for a while. Because they did show off stuff. the stuff we can pre-order. We've mentioned it already because it was on previous episodes of the Slaneshi and the Daughters of Cain updates for Age of Sigma, uh, going back to back, including Sigvald, uh, the new Hedonites of Slanesh Codex, new endless spells uh, for the Daughters of Cain, I believe they got new new good spells, and the dice yep, the Slaneshi, yeah, the Blood Snake and the the, the dice that the Slaneshi got are absolutely amazing. I love those dice because I like pearlescent dice. Yeah, but the uh, Daughters of Cain dice are tasty. Yeah, I prefer the Daughters of Cain dice as well. Ah, uh, I think you're wrong. They, they, the, <laughs> the, 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 look, the Slanesh dice, yeah, they're nice, right? But I've, I mean, I have, have you seen Chessix, right? They make dice that look like this. Have, everyone, have everyone I seen them. Chessix? 
Exactly. That's my point. You, of course, you fucking hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and have they, they, you they seen... just look like chess exercise. Have you me. seen the daughters of Cain dice? The daughters of Cain dice. They're sharper dice with like less rounded edges, and they're like a flat red, and they're really, really nice looking. Yeah. Right. To be fair, should we actually just have a look at these the fucking like pictures them. before we start? Okay, I'm trying to find the pictures now. Um, there we go. There's the free order. To... Let's let's go. Let's swap to it? our web overlay so we can talk about these these fucking dice. Right. So first you know, off, you know how you know how all like named characters have like shortened or like cooler names, like you know, Rob, uh, Rob, Rob, Robot Girly Man uh, mm. or G Man. Can we start calling Sigvald Siggy, please? Siggy. Well, yes. Siggy yeah. Vald. Siggy But the thing is, name. there's also Sigma. Shouldn't... Siggy Stardust. Oh, yeah, but well, guess what? No one cares about him. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Sigma, Sigma is only allowed to be referred to as old man. Oh, uh, yeah, you got mm. Sig, you got Siggy, and Sigma Nuts. Mm -hmm. It's Big Sigma. <laughs> big Sig. Sigma. The big Sugma. ass. I mean, we could, we could definitely shorten it by just not talking about him. That's true. Um, that would be shorter. Yeah. Look. <laughs> but look, look, no. at these, look at these Age of Sigma codexes. So we got Hidden Knights of Slash. We've got the borderless windowed version, of course, which seems to be the standard now for the special edition codex. Is just you get the border removed, and yeah, yeah. which I'm all here. Well, it has. It's not just that, right? Mm. It has it's like more, it's um, more of a sign of devotion. <laughs> it's it's got like it's zoomed out a little bit more, so you actually have more art. Yeah, and the edges are like slightly darker. Mm. That's I, true. I, I I I absolutely love. I absolutely love. And the, also, for the, some the, fucking bizarre stigma. reason, the only the only game now that GW posts with a uh, an EPUB is uh, the is the Slaneshi one. Yes, because they want you to buy the pay for the goddamn awful 40k app. Yeah, but okay, right. The Azir <laughs> app is okay. The Azir app is fine. The Azir app rules. And so you'll yeah. be able to buy it through the Azir app as well. Yeah. Obviously, you have to wait a week before it unlocks. But goddamn, uh, your battle cards oh, with days, I mean. tokens, but... which are, I think are always very helpful. Uh, but sometimes yes, you don't have are. enough of them because there's only like one. Of the of the spell you're casting, if you're casting it multiple times, you're kind of screwed. Yeah, there's always uh, we well, you can't, you cast, can't cast it multiple times. times. There's always the ones that you can double, like multiple enough, like abilities with you, multiple targets. The ones that you're not going to double always have more than you need. Mm. Yep, so it tends to be the case. I've never noticed that, but I do have the the, 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 the fire slayer as well was bad for one. that. The fire slayer was bad for that. I haven't properly looked at the Seraphon one, but it's like it's like an inch thick of just cardboard. There's so many of them. Mm. Stormcast have a lot. Yeah, but they've got so much lot, like lot. variation to yeah. it. Stormcast yeah. like four armies. Yeah. Mm, that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I can get the I got the brick right behind me. Oh no! Know. Oh no! My things look broken. Right, let's have a look at these dice. Look at that! <laughs> it was just nice pearlescent dice. They're just nice. Like it, they, they... Sorry, can I just say it's always funny to me to watch Alex turn around and reach into the realm of life as his background. <laughs> yeah. Just let me just pop something back real like, fast. Like hang on. Oh shit, things are falling everywhere. Oh no, things, all the demons are coming out the portal. Yep. Sorry, is it gonna keep the uh the, oh, the vibes away? Right. So the reason I like these dice so much is mainly because they're very similar to the thirty K dice sets they brought out. And all of them were really good. They were gorgeous. Compare those, uh, like... So you think... You're... Again... They're right, pearlescent, it... they're a nice colour, a good contrast, they've got the big Slaneshi logo on the side of it. You're saying These you like those just... dice because you liked other dice. I just like the <laughs> style of dice, okay? Because it is, it's pearlescent <laughs> colours, it's got the weird kind of wavy texture on it, and then it's the... using the gold. It's like, they're good color, co like good contrasting colours. They are very bright on the table, right? Yeah, but the I, other I just want to point out, out I found my brick of Stormcast cards and look yeah. at this fucking thing. It, this is a registered weapon. It's fucking this is stupid. Anyway, yeah. um so here, here, I will are the, say, here are the shitty daughters of Cain dice. Look. I, I gotta argue with you actually those are those are much as nicer. nice as the dice are for the Sunesh dice, those are the most common dice. They're just they're just chess they're just chessex dice. I guess like, just within, the right, yeah, they're because they're good. Yeah, yeah, don't get me wrong. It's not that they're bad. It's that they're nothing special. Yeah, you know, but these those are like, those are crisp, clean, like, easy to read. Yeah. Like, and yeah. you want these yeah. nice. Taste them. These nice. But, 
A lovely dice. The only okay. The, yeah, the only difference between these dice and the other dice is you want to eat them. That is what you no, just no, told no, me. I'll stand by that. Because you just give yeah. me the list of like of basically the same things I said for the for the Slaneshi dice, apart from I would like to eat these, please. I feel like that's a <laughs> del- that's a very qual- that's a that's a big qualifying factor. Uh, dice, can, do I want to eat these dice? dice? These dice do look like they'd hit more if you stood on them, and that's kind of on brand. Especially if you ate them as <laughs> yeah. well. Like, yeah. Look, maybe maybe we're into that. All right, maybe we want our dice to hit us. <laughs> Because then, then we won't mm-hmm. drop them on the floor as much. But also, we'll you want them to hurt you in game as well. Like, yeah, like, like one of these bad boys. Caltrops as well. You could just like, as your opponents uh, walking around the table to measure something, you just. Huh. Can I just yeah, unrelated that... just mention these other dice that I got, just because um no. they're really cool. On, on the topic of dice, this is related on the topic to of di- yeah, it's related to dice. <laughs> it's not related to Warhammer. I want to point uh, out. Yeah, I want to point trackers. out, Alex, you're in the tiniest fucking window right now. Like, it's gonna be really yeah, difficult yeah. to prove your point. Look at this, I, well, no, it's, oh, shit. You I also need to describe them because we dice. have audio listeners. I, I'm about to. I've got these uh, spiral dice that I got off Etsy. Oh, like, right. I've seen things like that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, They're really fucking cool because it's like the D4. It's, oh, they're like, they're like gem shaped, I guess is the best way to put it. Mm. But they fucking twist into like the fucking smallest point ever. And, you can and it's spin just like you can, kill, you can kill a man with these dice. You can't spin them. Because they're way too long. They like they look like bullets, which is kind of why I ended up getting them. Mm, yeah. That's fair. Very nice. Very nice dice. Oh, like okay, right. I will say at least. I mean, my my favorite dice are the ones that have got my um my uh solo channel art on, like the dwarf thing. And I would think at some point, if we ever did our own branded dice, I would still use those. And we just have to find symbols for everyone else, or make a symbol for everyone else. I'd agree with that. Because because uh, then we have everyone's got a unique set, and I really like yeah. and I really like having that kind of individuality. Also means that there's no reason to touch anyone else's dice. Unless uh, it's like geez. my face, and you really want to touch my face. I do really want to touch your face. It's been I, I haven't COVID. seen your, what your face looks like in months. I've actually forgotten what you look like. Yeah, I just think you look like a webcam. Chaos Space Marine. His, that's a selfie. I will get a webcam. Yeah. He's, that, that this, is, this is a webcam. Yeah, he, he yeah. just is a Chaos Space Marine. It's fine. I'm just wide and Chaos Space And it's perfectly Marine. still. <laughs> so, with, and alongside the heat nets, we've got their units now. We've got... Because the way that they've described it is that you can kind of play them in three different play styles, depending yeah. on who what leader you take. I think that's yeah. how they work right now, right? That's how they work. Yeah, and I... Yeah, but it's all the same units anyway, so you're basically saying this, playing the same playstyle. <laughs> yeah, but now, where they have actual units to reinforce that additional playstyle, plus Sigvald... Yeah. Right, right, I understand you've what got, now. You've got okay. your shiny boys, you've got the Myrmidesh Painbringers. Can I, can I also say I'm really surprised that the Lord of Pain is actually separate? Because he was in a box, I thought he'd be in that box forever. Oh, oh this I'm guy. You'd expect Dude. it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Who, That's fast who's here? around of those Who here expected... One or two things to release with the battle term. That's what I expected. Me? I was when I saw the pre-orders go up. I was genuinely just like, "Wait, what the fuck is happening?" They're just releasing <laughs> all of it. It's yeah, they literally yeah. Mm-hmm. they released all of the Slodash range all at once, and I was like, "Okay, that is a lot." Imagine saw, if like, they the did that for Space from, Marines. Uh, yeah, I saw the Daughters of Cain section underneath. I was like, "Surely not." Yeah, but to be fair, they have to. Because COVID it's... has pushed everything back, they can't you know be like, "Oh, just a little bit," because otherwise they'd be doing this till July. Yeah, but, yeah. but like, like, I'm but they're doing it with space breeds. With COVID, they were meant to be at the start of Feb. You say that, but with COVID, that hasn't been a thing until now. Mm. And they've, it's, it's always been a year, right? And they've, they've had like the, a slower release schedule from it. So it's good to see them start being like, fuck it, here you go, here's everything. Um, yeah, it's really cool, especially with these models. Look as good as they do. Yeah, like, they're, holy, they're, they're shit. really pretty. They're really cool. Holy shit! Um, the Lord of Pain making the mortals battle line as well is brilliant. Yeah, and then the the immortals are the guys with the shields. These like uh, shiny yes, guys with the shields. Guys with Tesla card lines. Yes, <laughs> thank you, George. <laughs> they're so, those guys are genuinely like they they're some of the best models for Sigma. The the the, the, ones the swords the shields. I love them. Oh, probably. No, I can agree with that. The shields as shame well I, are just really sick. Shame I won't get Let's... them. But we know somebody who will though. We need to pressure them to do it. That's yeah. true. I mean, it, the thing is, as well, is when if, when if and when he actually comes back to be local, we will be abusing I, him to make sure we get battle reports out of him because he will have all I these know, armies. 
I know you're not listening, Tom, but you've got to stop collecting ultramarines. Stop I will it. say, Tom, Tom's it's suffering into the ether. will make good yeah. content for battle reports. That's true. That's us just abusing <laughs> it. Just saying, <laughs> stop collecting ultramarines. Yeah. Play roll well. Yeah, mm. that's what I mean. <laughs> it's going to be fun. We got the, uh, what are they, what are they called? The Bliss Barb? Bliss Barb Seekers. Yes. Oh, those things look so the... good. <laughs> Them, them, them raptor that's things. Also, that's also the noise that they make. Yeah, exactly. That, that, yeah, that's, that's, I was speaking yeah. in their tongue. I was speaking he's, in their tongue. He's given a um, audio representation for the the podcast. Yeah. No. Yeah. If with that, you can kind of assume what they look like, and your assumption is you are correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all they're, you need. Like, that's all you need to kind of figure out this, what you think. Selection. The seahorses with <laughs> dummy thick legs. They are. They are yes. wide thighs. And then you've yeah, got the I, I, I don't know, cheeked up on a Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I don't know, cheekins. And then you've, I, 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 I play them. that the, army. The slangos, like they're all of it's big. good. They're actually big. All of it's good. Just look at them. Yeah, it's next to unit three. Yeah, yeah, they're so much bigger than Xangos. That's mad. That makes sense. That makes sense. Like Xangos are just men. Like These are men, gonna be so. really cool. No, they're not. They're same size. They're, they're a little bit bigger. Question. Yeah, but compared to these, these are these are more like very thin Bolgrins. Right, Sorry, but like bold a, a speaking of bold, though, speaking right, of bold you're, you're to them. S- side thing, are these the same size as Greater Possessed or just Normal Possessed? I'm assuming a Greater um, Possessed. Not sure. Because these greater. would be yeah, really yeah. good uh, conversions or the just arms. stand-ins for if you had an Emperor's Children Army with Possessed in it, with Greater Possessed. These would be great for That's that. That's actually really you could nice do some, idea. You could do some cool conversions for that. Yeah. I sometimes have a lot of good ideas. Because a greater possessed yeah, is yes. Not the exact... Yeah, it's the Sorry, base size saying, mostly. Even if they're not the exact same size, you can still, like, Beats rip pieces it. from them. Oh, yeah. Like, you. Because especially because the greater possessed model is just a thick ass spe- chaos space brain with, cra- with crab yeah. claws. Right. It's a nice spot collecting, so mm. yeah, that's the problem, yeah. But then you get these. If you, yeah, I would probably put these on the same base size, and I don't think anyone would complain. Mm. To Especially because you get around you to the oh, sorry, a, little... a box of those is probably the same price as a start collecting Chaos Space Marines. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> oh god, I'm not. Lo- I'm not looking forward to seeing how much these cost. After looking at Lumineth, especially. Mm. Yeah. I, that hurt because I was looking at Lumineth recently, and because I'm, I'm going to get Lumineth after I finish my chaos, and I'm just like, <laughs> you just Why? start crying. I but mean, how, how is... much? How much do you think uh, this fuck is gonna be? Sixty-five mm. quid. No, he's gonna be like worth forty quid. Yeah, probably more reasonable. Yeah, forty uh, does forty does sound reasonable. So I think if we add twenty quid onto it, then that's a bit more accurate to what you normally <laughs> yeah. would do. So. Uh, he, it is just him, and it's not really that much of a fancy base. Yeah. So his, hair, his hair was really complicated to sculpt, though, George. Yeah, true. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say like Lady Alinda's what like twenty quid, so double. And I'd say her her entire like model is super intricate and it's a detailed. Yeah, yeah, yeah you gotta you gotta pay, you gotta pay for it in chain rest. That's true. <laughs> you do have to pay for it in chain. You rest, get you have to pay the not, chain not rest tax. Cool. And, like, the fact you're getting... Okay, you're getting Sigvald's new model. You're getting your cavalry units. You're getting the, like, women, uh... Like, archers. I can't remember what they're called. Bliss Barb archers. You're then getting Andrew Elites, the two Lords of Pain. And you're getting, uh, the Glutton Man. Gluttus or On the On the Crab Chariot. That is a fun model. It's such a cool model. There are model. so many characters on that. Yeah, this it's is the, this uh, is your Catacross equivalent. Like, he's probably going to be like four hundred and fifty points. The pleasure plank, win or however you pronounce that. Word. The pleasure plank. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The pleasure plank. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go. That, that's what he's riding on. The pleasure plank. The palanquin. But I mean, that's considering you're only buying this model for the tiny halfling. That's the only yeah. reason you're buying this model, is so you can get a tiny or, halfling. If you want ogre with ogre claw arms for Blood Bowl. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, but the problem I have a feeling they're gonna be too close they're gonna be like stuck in that pose, so you can't really stand them up properly. 
No, no, no. You, you just rip their arms you off. You take the arms. Different ogre. Just pull their arms off. Mm, that's true. Put on a rat ogre. That's what you do. Put, yeah. Put on a rat. For, mut for uh, mutations. Yeah. Abuse those mutations. And, like, there's so much here. And then on the Daughters of Cain side, you're getting a new battle tome with the Borderless. You get cool the three. Cover. You're getting the three new endless spells the, uh... and, and your candy dice. And I will yeah, say, it's, at least it's the, so good. the fact that they're getting their endless spells now, you know, fair play. Well, not fair play. They probably should have got them ages ago. But the ones they, they do have here exist, look yeah. really sick. Like the blood snake, the sword mm -hmm. spinning around with blood in them, and then like the 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 daughter of Ke like the uh, what's it called? The dark the dark elf. Heart. Was it? Yeah, dark elf hand gripping heart thing. Like yeah, it's just heart. cool. It's yeah, just the Iron cool. Heart. Mm. And obviously we get some books along with it. But at the same time, it's they've also been showing off with alongside that, you know, like, oh, how do you play Slanesh? Like different ways to play Slanesh and this, that, and the other. Um I was like, oh that's cool. There's not been too much actual information in these articles though no no how I mean, how accurate do you think it's going to be as well do you think that that's going to be the way that people play it or do you think that people are going to get their hands on it and start fucking with it yeah uh, i think that generally is the way it currently works but mm -hmm. they're going to be able to do those things better now yeah because yeah. it's like especially because with most of the articles that they end up posting or just being like here's a way to play this army it never ends up like that because they wanted trying to be like, oh, look at this very specific kind of set of units. You can have this really fluffy <laughs> sneezing list. Um, You're allergic to excess. Yeah, app apparently I am. But you can have this like super cool, like fluffy list. And people are like, I'm going to take these three units, this hero with these spells, and I win. And I mean, then that's just, the then, then that just becomes how you play the army. You know, it's not even it's not even that with competitive slash at the moment. It's literally just I take three keepers of secrets. That's my list, and then stuff it all with demonettes afterwards. Well, yeah, uh, whatever. And... Yeah, I mean, keepers of secrets are just terrifying. Yeah, but and now, you, but, but then you kill one, they summon another. So it's just like, <laughs> okay, oh, cool, sick. But at least now with their with the Hedonets book, hopefully in terms of the Sigma side, they kind of help balance them. Uh, because obviously you're gonna be taking one at least, but you've also got Sigvald, so you got options now. So good for you. Uh, in reality, there's not much to mention. It's like, oh look, they're coming out. They're up for pre-order on Saturday, as the time of recording. Um, sick, cool, yeah. I'm not gonna be buying them. <laughs> very nice. That just very nice. Mm. And I'll tell you what else is very nice. Um, we're getting uh, a Kanofi character. For uh, uh, Warhammer <laughs> Quest, you heard me. Uh, so that was that was shown off, and I just want to at least uh, I want to talk today, about right? the model. This was just put up today. Uh, of a, if you are a D and D person, and you are playing oh, yeah, the absolutely. Wood Elf Ranger, or you need a Wood Elf with a bow for any reason, there you go. You've got your model now. Because mm -hmm. it is it's... a Gorgeous so model. pretty. I do love the model, but at the same time, can we have something with a bow and arrow that isn't a wood elf? No. No one else uses bows. <laughs> this is this is supposed also... to be the party's going to be very classic Warhammer. Yeah. Like, this, it has to be right. It's, it's just I don't blame going to be Vermintide. Yes. No. That's what I want. Yeah. That's what Which I want. Fine with oh, what a surprise! I wouldn't be surprised if. It turns out that it's just like, oh, it's the same souls or some bullshit. No, I doubt. I doubt it. Sigma brought them um, back and made them all go to this city of the dead. In terms of the model, just checking, all elves with bows have to be jumping off a rock, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can only you, wait to fire a bow. Yes. You can only fire a bow if you're wood elf, if you're at full sprint. Otherwise, or in mid -air. it work. Yeah, otherwise, otherwise you know, what, are you an elf or are you just a person with pointy ears, you know? Yeah, right. not true elf. True. Uh, uh, yeah, it's like a, you're also, not like, a dwarf you... unless you're being you're very sweary, standing still, and shooting a shotgun at things. And you have a beard. Mm. Yeah, and a beard. You know, like it's that kind of thing. So there is. I know. I hope. 
I'm praying there is a dwarf in this box, and I want him. No, I don't care be, what he looks like, a, I want there's him. There's an overlord, probably. There's yes. at least an overlord, yeah. There must be. Just, just, just to spite you, there is no dwarf. Fuck! <laughs> but, <laughs> it's, just, it's just gonna be a sentence saying, fuck you, Gaz. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Like, from, from James Workshop himself. There'll be a silhouette of a dwarf, and when they reveal it, it'll be... A very s- like... It'll be a smaller elf. Yeah. It'll be a, <laughs> it'll be a, it'll be a dwarfed-shaped fuck you, Gareth. <laughs> it'll just be a human, but crouching. <laughs> <laughs> just just straight-up squatting. <laughs> I'd, I'd be fine with that, because I'd paint a Nadi Astrak suit on him. Just a slow hey. squat. Yeah, yeah. You're just if you slash squat, and that's even better. I'm I'm down with that. You know, that's the thing. Oh, well, there's a cat. Um, with uh, just having a, a character in the Warhammer universe who can can canonically squat, that isn't a dwarf. You know, that's pretty good for me. And it's pretty easy to paint one of them wearing a tracksuit. So, GW, get on what it. What happened to Rattlings? Me... Rattlings is still a thing. Uh, nah. Squats on a thing. <laughs> Rat- yeah, rattlings are the snipers in the guards. Yeah, the, the guards. no, rattlings still yeah. exist. They're in the codex. For how long, we don't know. Yeah. I'd imagine people would still use those with actions being a thing. Oh, right? yeah. They can, like, they can move. They are. It yeah, they're very fast. Player. And they can forward deploy as deep. well. Um, I Interesting. Mean, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to show off this model because just so we've talked about it, really. Um, it's so pretty. Yeah, it's a nice model. I really like it. Um, I'm, I mean, we've already know we're all buying that box separately. <laughs> we're all at least pre-ordering one of that box. Um, annoyingly, there's not much else to go on at the moment. I mean, okay, no, there is one extra thing Let's we can talk a, about. There's we'll one extra thing we can talk about. Oh, what was that, Evan? Let's all do. Let's all buy the box and all of us paint it, and then we have a competition. Oh yeah, that uh, the cursed city. So oh no, yeah. yeah. So there are five. How many playable no. characters do you think are going to be in the base box? Eight. Who is city is the most cursed? Yeah. So yeah, there's eight. There's eight heroes. We pick it. We each pick a hero. We then. Oh, no, I, th- I meant the. I meant the entire box. But oh okay. no. Oh, Evan. No. But... <laughs> you do you know how much I don't paint? I'm not going to be able to finish that entire finish, box. Though? I can finish our character, probably, maybe. I well, don't believe it. all about challenging in yourself. That's why I'm saying the we whole, do. We each box. pick a character. We all do our character. Obviously, I'm picking the dwarf, uh, because fuck you. But then, but then, how how is it a competition if they're different models? Oh, that's true. Because you can still compare the quality of the painting and which one are people's favorites. And then Evan wins. You just can't vote for your own. Yeah. But what if, like me, you innately don't like dwarves? So, so don't pay the freaking dwarf. Hashtag team dwarf. Then have it be biased. Let it be biased. Let chaos reign. I'm going to come in, right, with this real solid point, right? Right. Yep. If we're going to do a painting competition, why don't we buy something that's like 10 quid each rather than a box that's going to be 100 quid each? Yeah, no, I'm much more for that. (laughs) 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 I'd love to take part. Everybody so, uh... buy a track pack. <laughs> Everybody buy Sigvold. No. I thought Nobody's we said like gold. ten quid each. <laughs> It'll take you ten minutes to paint the gold on Sigvold. Shout out to Me. all the custodian players. <laughs> Hashtag represent. <laughs> Hashtag shadow I keepers. I don't think I've seen a custodian player paint an army in less than six months. Well, it's it's either you're playing shadow keepers for competitive, so you spray them all black, and then use gold trim. Or you play normal custodies and you just spray them all gold and then you pick a colour for their tabard. Done. Yeah, it's but you so... spend like six months highlighting them all. You can try you brush can the... Brush yeah, exactly. You dry brush the fuck yeah, out of it. Yeah, easily. You paint them that. Up... Mate, right. Custody okay, I want to point out the size running. of the dry brush I have now. Like that, as a dry brush, is actually quite large. Like a fuck... I could cover so much with this. So many custodies would get painted. <laughs> Yeah, that's, like, that's, 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 up. that's how you should just do it. I'm just saying, I've seen so in. many people. It takes so long to paint them. It's like, just just, just smack it. That's because they brush. care Please. too much. People they should be like me, who Space don't Marine care enough. One color. People joke that Space Marines are just one colour, but at least they have, like, 
maybe different shoulder pad colors mm. and some silver details because studies are just entirely gold yeah, well, yeah. That, that's the kind of the point though yeah i still think i still don't think a custodian should be a playable army honestly like there's no point in them being playable <laughs> in terms of the fluff like it's it's fucking stupid each tournament I can only 100% have 100 percent agree you can only have five i feel like, I feel like custodian guard that's, that's, that's all you're allowed and they have to they have to, to ally things, in though. yeah that does apply to a lot of armies if you go by that yeah so you know, here's the thing right so custodies right you got all the imperium players they get like one free call and they have they have that's basically whoever calls them first they get five custodian that one player with the five custodian guards he walks up to the table drops them in and then it's a 2v1 for a while and then yep. the, obviously the imperial player's got to win because the custodians have turned up and that's it that is the only reason that they should ever be in the game but Although, do i yeah, want a custodian's army good point yes. that if we're doing it canonically then shouldn't there only be about 12 elder <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, yeah, I mean yeah, yes. again, and, the, and the you shouldn't be able to hit any of them. That's the reason true. the canon yeah. arguments all fall apart because if it was if, in like if you were going from canon, then yeah, there shouldn't be much Eldar, but you should you should almost never win a game against them, right? Because yeah, imagine the canon. Game. Imagine canon actually making sense anyway, in, in, in yeah. a Toy Soldiers game. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Eldar, because we're talking about how many there are, let's have a look at this mm -hmm. Cat Blight Warrior. I really, I, I have things, I have feelings, and. So, like, oh, don't get me wrong. Most of the to craft I, yeah, okay, I like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's mainly to do with the changes in this sheet, right? So, mm -hmm. the big, the big things are they have a four up save instead of a five up save now. Why wasn't Christ. that pointed out? Why did they point out the extra attack over the fact that they have a four up save? Oh, because GW is dumb. Uh, especially when it comes to Eldar, they get like blinded by things that are important. Um, yeah. The plus one yep. attack though is massive. Like that's so fucking good. And not because I, I don't care about these honestly, like Dark Eldar, but they are they are important. I'm just like, okay, if they're getting plus one attack, maybe Eldar craft old Eldar's melee units like Banshees. Well, ah. should you get more <laughs> attack? <laughs> Please. <laughs> These, Alex, the plus one attack is actually because they're covered in spikes. No, yeah, they just kind uh, of... It's, it's not because they're attacking more they kind of run They kind them. of Ramus charge into people. They just curl up into a ball and roll. The thing, the thing yeah. is that they're, like, they're genuinely, like, that stat line's way better. Like, so much better. They're not just really good. Them, no. Yeah. They're genuinely yeah, scary. They're just, I'm, like, baseline human stats. And it's like, hang on, these are elves. These aren't... These are taller than people. Mm -hmm. They're tougher they're, than people. They're yeah, taller, so they get better stats. Yeah, exactly. It's who, <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, yeah. I am yeah. fucked. It's, it's better than they go one inch faster. It's like, I don't fucking care about that. Well, to, to yeah. be fair, no, I think that is actually a genuine thing. Of The taller it is, the better a, it is. That's a... <laughs> I think the one inch faster is definitely a thing, though. Yeah, it, it is, but it's like... I'm paying more points because they get one extra inch of movement and that's it. Like, I, just, like, I don't fucking care. Like, oh, my gun's poisoned, sure, but you can get like two guardsmen instead. That's twice as many shots, right? So, but uh, the changes in general are good. The splinter cannon change is fucking amazing. It's okay, such a yeah. side yeah, break, in my opinion. On. No? Why is it a side okay, they, they did need damage too, mm -hmm. but I just like the amount of shots that it had because the unit that oh. it was with. Because it was Shit. open fire three. It's half the shots now. Shit, I forgot about that. Yeah, sure? because like, it was it was rapid fire. I could have sworn it was heavy. Yeah. Rapid fire three. Yeah. Someone check one d four chan real fast. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, damage two absolutely necessary. I just yeah, definitely. Because currently all they have it's is correct. dizzy can. And Dissy Cannons oh, are yeah. like basically only on Ravagers. Oh shit, mm. it is Rapid Fire. Yeah. As we looked okay, at with the competitive list, uh, list last week. So, ah, I mean, sucks. Okay. Competi competitively, this is better because of Marine Meta. But at the same time, I just like the amount of shots that it had. No, mm. oh, I completely agree. Um, okay. So I, I would say to George, I like it because it's kind of the Shuriken Cannon equivalent. And I was just like, mm. oh. I mean, the thing that I find. <laughs> Shuriken Cannon would it... be a little bit better, but I don't know is the fact that it's been changed to a heavy on what is supposed to be an incredibly mobile army and very mobile troops. Look, I'm just saying, if they get the ability to ignore the heavy penalty, I'm going to have to go in and try a bit. Well... I'm going no, in, lads. Be... I'm going in. Basically, that will just be them getting better battle focus. So here's, like, here's, what I, I, here's what I want to point out. In. Here's what I want to point out, right? Is the, the trend that I've now seen, and it's probably going to be the case for every army, that 
damage two is basically now the same as damage one because the no. majority of players will have no. damage two troops of some sort. No. Apart from no, it's no, just I a just... bigger range. It doesn't. Cha- it, 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 yeah. it I, I just I see damage two. I'm like, okay, okay. They're just gonna they're gonna pick a things like right. That's that, that's damage two now. So like, oh, okay. Right. Right. Like, so if 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 you talk everything about damage two weapons, then you go against someone with loads of one wound things, then you come overkill on it, and you're gonna you, suffer. You go up against crumbs, they would ruin your day, because you mm. just, you've got so much points invested in double the damage that mm. you, you you need. Well, I guess I'll just I'll just end myself yeah. then. I guess because I'm definitely wrong. <laughs> like <laughs> it, it's 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 better than what it was because everything was just damage one, right? And yeah. You would take anti tank weapons and just kill everything with them. Yeah. No, that, now that's there's actually thing a middle is, ground. Thing is, right about about this, it is just a heavy bolter, and that's that's it, they are good guns. But I'm getting a very early Warhammer edition vibe of, ooh, everyone's got land raiders and everyone's got dreadnoughts. They're just making fair. everything the same. I, yeah, I didn't realize that that's, that's, that's kind of what, street, I, which that's I kind like. of what I'm concerned about. You know? Mm. Okay, is so everyone going to have a heavy bolter now? Mm. <laughs> that's yeah, that's what, what I mean. Different. That is exactly that's what I mean. Point. Thank you, Evan. The but difference it does have poison, is it's poisoned. And it doesn't yeah. do well against vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, it's only yeah I think that's that's a, quite a. It did, it, it, I mean, does, it does not wound sisters on twos. Yeah. Well, no, it doesn't anyway. Heavy bolts. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's six for some reason. I don't think everything will be heavy bolted though. I think this is the. I don't think I, this show. Yeah, I don't think everything I will. Like, no. They wouldn't change a shuriken right. cannon to be like a heavy bolter. Maybe a scatter laser. Yeah, I was gonna say scatter lasers. Scat. That's fine. Scatter lasers. Shit. Cool. They've given you an extra AP and damage too, but we've reduced the strength by one. Oh, I suppose heavy bolter then. No, 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 no. No, it's not. No. <laughs> it's a scatter laser. <laughs> it's definitely different. Like. I don't know. I, I I think Evan Evan summed up my point beautifully, um, and that's that was kind of my concern of when I said like, oh, it's damage two. Mm. Confirmed. Harlequin land raiders are coming back. God, they're coming. <laughs> they're just gonna steal a land raider from an ultramarine and just everyone put a big, gets land raiders. They're yeah. just gonna put a big clown face on the front of it. Honk, Not honk. that anyone will mm-hmm. take them because they're still bad. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is a case of um, you can't make marines have two wounds across the entire board and still have weapons that are only, only damage damage. one. Yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's, I don't think it's, that's valid. I don't think it's much it's to do with the damage per se. It's the thing that in general I don't like about 40k for a while where it's like, stat lines feeling similar like and then met. This one I don't think it's too bad because it has poison. Like, so it's, it is actually different. Um, But like you're yeah, having... It does have the whole, ooh, this gun feels the same vibe, which isn't necessarily good. Mm. But, but we, can, we, have, again, we have to wait for the Jukari but then, book. But then again, at the same time, you know, a heavy bolter has more strength and has plus one damage in the first round and all that stuff. So I, they, I don't think they'll feel the same if you actually use them. And I bet yeah. you they'll ignore the heavy penalty or something with them. They'll probably, they'll the probably have a thing of when they get out, it'll be like... Uh, when in a venom, when in a venom or raider, they'll probably ignore it. When in a venom or raider, yeah, that'll be it. Because that's because the that's thing with sort of um, the there's a specific uh, tempestus trait, like well, like global trait, army trait being, um, you know, when you get out of a transport, you ignore the heavy penalty, you know, like, and that can actually be quite huge. So I would assume, considering them cabalites, you usually having them come out of all fucking transports of any size. That they'll get some sort of bonus with that. You know, that makes complete sense. It fits the it theme as well. It could even be something to do with power from pain. Sorry, these, also, it... these also benefit from specs as well, don't they? From what? From splinter racks. I don't know what they're they they yeah. yeah, they do. So they might change yeah. splinter racks. Oh, 100%. They're going to change splinter racks. Is splinter racks reroll ones to hit? Uh, it's uh, sixes like to hit, do two hits. There you go. Mm. But I just yeah. want them to—I just want them to say when the book's coming out. Mm. Uh, after this, so there's going to be a gap after the Sigma stuff comes out. It's going to be a week of nothing, and then it'll be on pre-order preview the next week. Yeah. In yeah. the in the meantime, pick up a few boxes of Drukari, and you might see an early preview of their new profiles yourself because they're all getting repackaged before their release. Alternatively, look at Reddit. Oh yeah, no, just wait until Reddit yep. posts it. Yep. Because you know, that's where all the information comes from. 
I would not recommend buying any Drakari at the moment because the meta is probably going to drastically change because they have to change the book so much. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, if I, I don't have to buy stuff when the book comes out. Yeah. Or at least all... like, because, or at least wait until the start the fucking combat patrol comes out. Definitely wait until the combat patrol, because five hundred points you could fit a lot in five hundred points of Drakari. That was yeah, that's they won't. Six hundred cabalites. <laughs> a million cabalites. I'm just saying. Or, or three witches. I, yep. <laughs> it, it made me go, ooh, I like these changes. Can't wait to see the two craft. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I know, so Alex, want... yeah. Alex just wants to see craft worlds. That's all, that's what he wants to I see. I just want, I will say, my friendship with craft world ended anyway, a long time ago, and now Lumineth is filling that void, but it looks like things, because, wow, can't wait for them. Cannot wait. But here's the thing, well, if, like, if the Eldar book... was me looking at space marines, being like, man, I wish chaos were like that. One day, yeah. Except, mm -hmm. um, the, the the space the chaos one uh, condition is lasted for many, many, many years, and then and it's also we got a, every six we got, months. I get that feeling because they have a new book. We got a hit a taste, yeah. just a mm, little bit, little bit of something at the end of seventh edition, and then it got burnt to the ground mm. immediately. Rest in peace, traitor legions. It's like, oh yeah, but <laughs> the, you know, you get the vigilance book, and then you win. You won a traitor thing, legions. guys. It's like. Did we know? Okay, like... I'm gonna I'm gonna frame that book, and more so the the conversation we had here earlier about having our own personalized dice. The six on my dice is gonna be a picture of the Traitor Legion cover. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it a um? We're gonna maximize the detail on that dice. Cover. <laughs> isn't, it a isn't it a thousand son? Yeah, it's a it's a Terminator. Ah, oh, fucking! It's a, it's a, it's a Scarab Occult Terminator. Mm, oh, you're like thousand sons? No, Traitor Legions. How dare you assume otherwise? Like, it's it's just sad, but we can only pray. Look, we're going to be getting, as, as Evan pointed out, it's going to be, what, two weeks until we probably get the pre-order for the book? End of Feb? Yeah. You know, and the sister's book will not be far behind. And then and afterwards, the we'll have to see. That as well. Yes, the kill yeah, team box. Ignore, no, 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 we don't talk team. about the kill team box. We don't talk about that. But it's got flayed ones in it. No, but no we don't talk about that, Dodge. We're not buying it. <laughs> Yeah, don't no, resist. You don't Pull buy it. Terrain. You don't, don't buy, buy it. You don't buy it. Don't buy the box. If you are, if you are buying it, give me the terrain. <laughs> don't buy the box. Don't buy it. Don't buy the box. Uh, oh. but because I think the make like the one assumption that we can make in terms of the timeline now is in terms of what's coming out from that. Because I always go back to that initial kind of reveal of like, look at the things we're gonna bring out in it, like the next few codexes, and they're showing off the spins. We've now we've now got Drukari and Sisters. They're getting the two player box, and the Sisters Codex will not be far behind. The only two armies left from that trailer were Admech and Orcs. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to bring out a two player box because that would be dumb. But those are yeah, most likely orcs, the next two combo <laughs> release, and they're probably only getting like our model each because we've already seen that. And god damn, I want the Admech stuff. I want it now because I, I hope it's going to be good. I hope yeah. they make Radmium Carbines not trash. Because they are the bad. good old thing of all the books so far have been brilliant, but what but if my when? book isn't? When? When yeah, will yeah. they fall? And and the problem is, is Orcs has got a lot of hype around it because, you know, it's Orcs. Like, mm. the, the one what main thing... It's... Oh, sorry, Karen. I was going to say, they, they run the risk of um, with Orcs because it's an army that is constantly sort of viewed and picked up almost exclusively for the the dumb stuff, the the, the, the joke side of it. Mm. I thought you were about to call out like, all Orc players being dumb. No, 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 I'm, I'm an absolute dumb. idiot. Um, <laughs> but if you go, if they lean far too into the joke, then they risk making a garbage army. Mm. And if they lean yeah. far too into making something balanced, they risk making a boring orc army, which is a sin. To be so, fair, yeah. The saga of the, the saga of the beast release for Psychic Awakening for orcs was really good. So good. It was a so really good, good release. Yeah. It was great rules, really thematic and fluffy uh like st structure stuff great stratagems like if they did and the that boss. and obviously the boss if mm -hmm. they did that for the whole book like you know with that in mind it's like right orcs players want this 
Orcs players love this. Give us that. Mm. It's like, okay, we could do that. And again, considering everything they've learned so far, I really hope... And, and to be fair as well, they are... Compared to 8th edition, the 9th edition playtesting pool is a lot bigger than the 8th edition one, one was. It is, yeah. And they've, they, obviously, they've picked that over time because the hobby is just getting more and more popular. And they're more getting more varied opinions on it. Especially because I know the Tabletop Tactics team are involved in playtesting. And they have, like, two different orc armies, and they are big advocates of orcs. So, I Let's really hope that translates. Them. In terms of they actually talk to orc players and be like, this is what mm. we're planning on doing. And the orc t- players will be like, yes, we like this, or no, stop it, change it, this is how we think it should work. The ad mech as well, because they got such a strong release with Engine War, and there was so much good shit in it. They because got so much stuff in general. Yeah, because we got all the point. new units that, what to be fair, were filling all the holes we needed. So I think the ad mech now is more of a completely balanced army, but it is still the new stuff clashing with the old because the old book didn't change too much like we haven't had many changes with the old book like we still was okay i st- like oh yeah i got a- i got these cerebron raiders now cool i've still got six uh cat uh sorry uh castellan with guns and i'm gonna wrath of mars and blah 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 and then now oh look that combo got stronger because i can make them all strength though all those guns strength seven and then also mortal wound and then extra ap and then i'm re-rolling everything uh so just leave the board just walk away. I win. So now, I hope that they don't do that again. And they make the army we'll interesting. Note that with Psychic Awakenings, some of it was just like, ooh, let's just fill in some gaps and wait for ninth. Yeah. Like, yeah. Especially with Death Guard. Death Guard was literally, man, these are trash. Let's give them a bunch of crazy stuff for the next six months, mm. and then we'll fix them properly. Yeah. Because, like, the, yeah. bon- the bonkers stuff from... The Psychic Awakening book for Death Guard, it's all gone. Yeah, it like, was the play no companies longer... that they've fixed. You can't, you can't. It wasn't even that. It was the stratagems mostly. Like, hey, all of this unit can throw grenades. Um, uh, this Defiler is getting disgustingly resilient. It's like, oh, okay. Um, but now it's actually fun rules. So it's mm. a lot of the rules are probably going to change, like a big time. But yeah, for, in, in a good way. And even that, I wouldn't say even like the Saga of the Beast stuff was like bonkers i think it was no, better think. like it was a good step and i hope that mm. with that as you say like they give them some fun toys and then actually either strengthen them or just balance them in better and the yeah, ambic stuff frankly, in, yeah in, in my opinion the create your own orc clan stuff was garbage it yeah. wasn't it yeah, was they, mm, yeah everyone had a look at that and went god that looks cool it's not good though, and then just got rid of it and carried on using either Death Skulls, skulls or um, like Bad, bad Sure. Yeah. Flamers are cool and all, but there's only like four units that have any decent flamers, but they're squishy the, as hell and nobody the, uses the them. The flamers are garbage for orcs. I mean, Burner Boys are a joke. Mm. It's like, hey, want an entire army of Burner Boys? No? No. <laughs> no. Cool. <laughs> Here's some rules for it. Buy the book then. Or it's like mm-hmm. people would do two things. They would have, they would have a Death Skulls main battalion, and then they'd have a second battalion of the Grot mobs. Uh, so they had lots of Grots. They couldn't interact with uh, them. Lots of. Uh, and, but they had mech guns, guns. Big guns. It was all. It was, it was all yeah. fucking mech guns, and they were all like hitting on fours with like invulns and stupid shit. Like that was it. And that was like that was those are the main things, but. I think. Because we've already talked about this at length, about, like, if it was your codex, what would you want? And I just want to see the books now. Like, I just want them to show... I want them to reveal that fucking ad mech model. They've been teasing me (laughs) for seven months. Just I am slightly unhinged. They've 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 been aiming all their teasing at you. Ah! (laughs) Like, oh my god, I want it. I just want it. That's all I want. (laughs) Like, yeah, they got. I'm a broken man. Bruise, uh, and then they cut out all of the sergeant parts and put it into a separate CAD file, and that's the model. Basically, and I want it. <laughs> that's all. I don't care. I want it. Um, like it's 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 nice to know. It's just the waiting is difficult, and even then, the waiting is made even worse by the fact that we can't play the pissing thing, and I just want to be able to read it. 
You know, it's like I can't even put any mm. of the stuff into the factors, but I like I could theory craft like out the ass. I'm like, oh, I could play this. Like, oh, this this list could work. Play some brain hammer. Brain hammer, or brain God hammer. forbid, trying to play TTS. Or if you have multiple armies, play against yourself at home. If you can. Wow, I won again. Wow. <laughs> oh, I lost. Fuck. How do you constantly lose yeah. against yourself? No. Playing, yes, playing you it mind? yourself at home is the, it's the same as just having a pile of dice and just rolling it and just keep, just, just just keep rolling the dice and be like haha. Uh, play, playing with um, playing Warhammer with yourself is just like me playing against playing against Elliot and Sigma because he just rolls dice and I take everything off the board. <laughs> Look, that's true. Yeah, that's that's, right. that's, that's not wrong. Just, I'm, I'm just there to help him take stuff off the board, my stuff. Yeah, specifically. It's almost like Bone Reapers were stupid, don't mm. they? I think John had something to say, though. Apologies for cutting, yeah, no, cutting so I, you off, John. I was going to say, um, do you mind if I, uh, for a brief moment, as we're not a completely Warhammer-centric podcast... Yeah, go for it. Uh, I was going to ask, if people have experience with other war games, apart from Warhammer, what have you found to be easy to pick up, or... or quick to pick up what's oh, a good way to I've start one, war gaming that isn't I've, that doesn't cost oh, no, 500 mine, pounds mine was just gonna be me complaining about something never mind <laughs> i've got i've got something to complain about which would be great even though it's like fucking eight months eight months no it's almost a year old news i know what this is well. which is a uh, guild ball rest in peace oh rip guild ball guild, so um oh, yeah i own stuff for that yeah he yeah, convinced us to, to buy guild stuff ball. for it yeah, because it's a good game. It was a really goddamn good game, and like the rules are really good. Um, I felt like it was quite simple to pick up and learn as well, and all that stuff. But apparently, Steam Forge Games had to drop the game because they couldn't get new people to be interested in it because it was um, the community was bad, and the game was too hard to get into and, and whatnot. And I was like, cool. What first of all, the community was fine. So you can't blame your community for your game dying. That's actually I, no. I, the thing, okay, I know for a fact what happened with that thing is because Steamforge Games realized they made more money off of making video yeah. game board games from Kickstarter, which all played the exact same. Yeah, even, uh, the, even and the they Dark didn't Souls want to make one else. was a like. The I own Souls the Dark Souls one. one. It was a mess. They I fucked it. over so many people in the Kickstarter. I, I didn't know about yeah, it. I, I didn't buy the Kickstarter. Um, I bought it afterwards, and I remember me so, and John have played it a few times. Like, so like, the thing is, it's like. Like, they were like, oh, our game's not selling I wonder why. And it was simply, it's simply just like, the starter set was one edition behind. There was no physical rule book. Um, that, like, that you could, if you wanted to get a measuring tools for the game, you'd have to get them from a fucking third party site. Mm. Uh, which, you know, are mandatory tools for the game. Like, and they're like, oh, I wonder why no one's playing it. It's like, it's simply because they didn't fucking try. And then they blamed their community for caring about the game. It was awful. It's like, which sucks, right? Because the thing is, Steam Forged Games make amazing I, minis. I was about to say, they are, be careful what you say here now. We don't want to get yeah, sucked. I don't know, I don't give a shit about that. But, um, <laughs> what do you mean? Like, what, do you, what do you mean you don't give a shit? No, you can complain. This is a review. This is it's, it's, a tool. Hey, hey, it's hey, completely hey. allowed. Hey, I'm, I can have my opinions. I don't, like, if, if opinions are fine. Whatever, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying, saying as well. Just don't slander them too much. I don't, it's none of this is, if you want to none meet, of this is slander. meet us and have a fist fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the car well, park well, of your office, probably about, we will. Probably about it's probably a bad thing to say, but this episode of the podcast is sponsored by Steamforge Games. Thank <laughs> you. It's not sponsored. <laughs> no, it's not sponsored. Uh, let me get to my point. Let me get to my damn point. The thing is, the problem is that they make amazing fucking minis, they right? Do. They do. And I'm, now I'm going to cycle around to recent news. Which is they recently announced? I think is it in like in a month or two they're gonna be kickstarting a fucking Monster Hunter World board game. I'm like, I oh, fucking why? hate you guys. Like, I hate okay. them. I have I have massive gripe against them. But God, I I, I, I can't not kickstart that. Like, I, I think the last you. thing, that I, the last thing, yeah, the last thing I saw them posting was like preset D and D module encounters, which they gave you all the terrain, they gave you the monsters, and they gave you everything for that. And it's like oh. you can run this encounter. And they were, I, I can't yeah, remember what they're called, but I remember seeing them in Firestorm. That's them. That, no, that is... The, is that not? It, not you're, it, you're about it looks, encounters. It looks Steamforged quality. Who is it? I, that's what I thought it was. Me, it might, it might be Steamforged, though. I, I think it remember. is Steamforged. Because I was, yeah, remember is, talking is, to the guys is, in Firestorm then, and they it, said it's, Steamforged is coming it, out with something. It's, it's not stocked near any of the Steamforged stuff in Firestorm for no, some reason. It's No, it's all in the d and 
none of their branding on the box almost it's like fucking subtle don't know why but yeah 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 that those boxes are amazing they're dude. really nice and they're the really cheap the, yeah. the value on those boxes like here's no, the, the thing right? steamforge games are talented at making models but it Not was rules. just so sad to see, it was so sad to see them see like such a unique ip just go oh fuck it whatever um yeah. it was it was the rules of the game are fine from what i experienced yeah but yeah um so I now have, that I have you've done the it. opposite of answer my question. <laughs> yeah. I, I think yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a fair point that Guild no, no, Ball no, 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 does nothing... exist and it is an easy to pick up game from Alex's yeah. perspective. I guess that oh, is te- it's like I a think... half answer. I think, to be honest, I do think that was definitely a, a, a good point. But I am interested to know, like, because I mean, what... surely I you guys have. That's why. Other games. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so, is I, there something I've that got... you think. Sorry, I've not ahead. actually played, like, of the games, but I've looked at them, I've read the rules of them, and I've almost bought them, and then been like, hey, anyone want to play this with me? And it's just like... I mean, I'm always down to try stuff. Like, we already... You even said when we cool. start doing battle reports, it's basically just going to be me and you buying into new games and just mm. playing them against each other to well, see how it goes. It was like... So, I mean, you guys were on about Infinity last year, or... right? Yeah. And I remember... You guys go on about building stuff. I'd look at the models. I go, okay, cool. I'm not too much a fan of all the aesthetic. But I like these boys, the Templars. And then I'm like, how do I make a list? And I just remember looking at it like, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, the Infinity list making was a bit weird because it's just like individual dudes, basically like kill team. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like mm. half skirmish. Like Infinity, I got. Obviously, I've got the, some of the JSA boys. I bought the Code 1, the two player starter set for like their smaller version of the game. And to yeah. be fair, those starter kits are really good as starter oh, that kits. Was, I think we played a game we, of that. Yeah, we um, did. But the problem is, is that well, like it really comes fun. with it comes with the mat, it comes with the terrain, it comes with two very balanced forces against each other. And those minis, like once you got that, you could just add like a model or like maybe one or two, and it gives you the recommendations of what you can add. It's like right, you have got a tournament legal list now. It's like cool. How do I play more than just the starter game? Uh, yeah, it's a different game. Yeah, it's, it, it, that's the annoying thing with Infinity, and it annoys the shit out of me. Like, you oh, can play through that... the steps, because, like, the way they do the starter set is that each mission is slowly, like, right, here's a set thing. Here's the layout. Here are where your models go. This is how that you add a mechanic. The next page, new mission, add a mechanic, add a character, and this kind of thing. And it really steps you in, and it's great. But that point from your last tutorial game to actually playing a game of Infinity or Infinity Code 1 is such a monumental gap that it does not make any sense. It's bonkers to me. And it's it like, um, annoys me. Is it, is, it, is it worse than the kill team gap to normal Warhammer? Yes. <laughs> I think so. Okay. Because they I, add I so many extra mechanics. That bad. I, I don't think it's that bad. <sighs> like they add so many extra mechanics that you need to think about like medics and hacking and like shit like that which isn't covered in the tutorial it's like not yeah, covered in the start it's is a different game true. kill team is just a completely different game that, that's it's not true. supposed to be though it's supposed to be a stepping stone into, into, it, into it's Warhammer. not though it's not see the I problem know. i had it's a very bad one, but... was that when i was assembling them i was really hyped playing the game i got the models started to assemble them they were metal, which is a little yeah. bit fiddly, but yeah. they were a decent amount of parts. I absolutely hated assembling those models so much that I just put them in my cupboard and. Uh, I actually, I actually don't mind them. Before. I thought they were Did fine. Did you have to pin a lot? No, uh, I didn't. You were. Oh okay, because I know with some metal models, pinning becomes a big, uh, a big thing that you gotta yeah, do. Because I've got some on my shelf, right? I've got this because uh, I bought uh, the Japanese sectoral. Uh, the JSA because they were I like the aesthetic because they had like the samurai mm-hmm. robot dudes, um, and they have uh, it's hard, kind of hard to see because I primed it white, but it's a like a uh, has anyone seen Durara, the anime? It's the oh, she, it's no, the I've like, seen the, like the, a, I've seen like a couple episodes. It's the the, see, the main thing is is the hel- of... it's the helmet with the cat ears, oh, right, and she right. rides a motorcycle yeah. with a big with like a blade, exactly that in terms of as a mini. But she's got this big fucking scythe, right? Because they, they take a lot of anime inspiration. Like, they, they've already said, like, we use a lot of that. Ghost in the Shell fans, if you want minis, you go there, right? Mm. I have not had a, like... 
any issue with putting together those models, apart from maybe, like, trying to fit in one, like, chess piece in properly, because of how it's slotted together, but it didn't take much to get that to work. So, I had a completely different experience to Evan, and mine were fine. And the, and the, infin and the Code 1 starter set as well. The there's no proper instructions, which also doesn't help. But it wasn't difficult. It wasn't that bad for me. And it's sad, because I actually wanted to play Infinity as well against Evan, but I don't think he's ever going to touch that game again. So, what I've been looking at, especially recently, mm -hmm. uh, after watching The Mandalorian, I was on a massive Star Wars hype again. Yeah. After my, um, my three-month placement of playing um, Star Wars The Old Republic constantly. Um, mm. <laughs> but yeah, I watched The Mandalorian, big Star Wars hype, started playing Battlefront 2 again. And then I was like, wait, hang on. Star Wars Legion, there was just recently a small release of Republic stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, mm, I want clones now. I thought you didn't want clones originally when we first oh, talked I about do. it. Clones I like cool. clones. Because I want clones I as well. Clones. The clones are but cool. We can both have, we can yeah. make them fight. Yeah. yeah. Clone cr training exercises. Legion actually yeah. looks like a pretty decent and somewhat easy game because it's a fantasy it's cool. flight game. Yes. Uh, it's not anymore. No, but they still own the license for it. They just, they the miniatures are being made by a different company. Yep. Yeah. That's but they still own Star Wars Legion. The great thing about um, Atomic Mask Games, though, is that already they put a post up earlier about ARC Troopers. No, oh, ARC Troopers, sorry, the Command Squad for uh, the clones. Commandos? They actually, I, they act, no, the Command Squad. Okay. Like, as in, like, there's a commander mm -hmm. in there, there's a comms dude, a medic, and an engineer. Ow. They actually pointed out who is who, which, oh. I mean, it's quite easy to tell, but, like, when they say, ah, oh, yes, this DL blaster, you're like, right, I don't know what that is. So then you're there Googling what a DL blaster looks like to then be like, okay, that's that man, that's that man. Yep. With mm. these, they actually put a picture up and look at Label medic, them properly. point and arrow. It's like, thank you. Mm. I would, pr honestly, mm. <sighs> droids would be tempting. Droids are cool. I, I would be so tempted with droids. I want to play droids. <laughs> I'm going to get so many B1s. Just, you could have look at me like nice. I've got something go. wrong with me. Three droid players and two clone players. Sorry yeah. if you like um, Empire Fuck, Hero, the, fuck, the, fuck the original the trilogy. I'm sorry. Clones are cool. Like, <laughs> original trilogy is not as interesting of a battle zone. Yeah, it's you know not. what? A guy's in jackets against people with uh, in laminate armor. It's, 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 armor it's just like at that point, just go play fucking World War Two war, war game, right? <laughs> I do want to like, try a World War Two war game. I want. I, that's what I say to people that play Astra. You can't take that from me as well. <laughs> I, I want to. I want to play X Wing or Armada. That's why I want to play. I want to play X Wing. I you love Star Hang Wars. Yeah. Can I just say, Alex, that um, Atomic Mass Games have said that they're releasing like three new Star Wars miniatures games. So, huh? yeah, when they got the license, they were like, yeah, we're doing a bunch more games. Wait, Atomic Mass Games are the people who do... Marvel. Oh, they, the do, Marvel, they do the Marvel, Marvel, stuff, the Marvel well. stuff, yeah. yeah. Marvel, I want to say, from what I've seen... Amazing models. From what I've seen, Crisis Protocol as a minis game plays really well and it looks super interesting. Because you just assemble superhero teams and they all have, like, things going on and then they fight. You know, right, it's I like, just, that's exactly just, what you I want just, from just, a no, Marvel, thi Marvel was, game. Sorry. You know? Because Evan started, right? I need to know. What what did they say about these games? They said no, nothing they else. Said they just said, we're making we're games. We're making more games. Oh, that's Star not helped, is it? Like, it's, it's, I can't, but they are still supporting. Mm. Big X-Wing. Squad is they going to make a Squadrons game? Well, that's just what X-Wing is. I know, <laughs> exactly. I, so I don't, I, where are you going with it, Evan? What, what, what's <laughs> obvious? I'm just saying, you could, you could just, like, hope. Hope for what? X-Wing exists. X-Wing. Yeah, but a better one. But then, no, they're still making oh, X. You meant they still, they still. It hasn't. The X Men hasn't stopped though. No, they're still, they're still, they're still making make X Men. They're their own competition. Yeah. Oh, oh, as in X Men's owned by a different company at the moment, and they still have yeah. a license. That's, yeah, no, they're still producing. Mean? Yeah, they're still. No, I thought they were actually taking the. They were actually writing rules for it too. So, Evan, wouldn't it be so? Wouldn't it be new games? Wouldn't it be three new games that, and then those three would not be Legion, X Wing, or Armada, right? Yes, yeah. that's my assumption. Surely it would have to. Jesus Christ, that's a 
six model ranges, there's no, there has to be crossover, right? Must be. I don't even know what they do, though, because you've got, like, unless they did, like, I don't know, World of Tanks Star Wars? Like, I don't know what else there's to do for three games. I'm uh, sure they'd find, they'd find a thing for it. Maybe another version uh, of Imperial then... Assault? I bet you they're not necessarily... I bet they might be ones to replace old ones. I think it would make sense then if... I think they might replace X-Wing with an yeah, updated one. Yeah, it doesn't one. make any sense, right? Like, what new yeah. brand new... Brand... Like, thinking of one brand new, like, Star Wars miniatures game is something, but, like, three? Come on. That's... Also, like... I can only assume they're redoing them older ones. Arguably, <laughs> the one. Star Wars should not be called X-Wing. Obviously, they can't just change the name because it's, like, a quite old... The thing is, there. as well, X Wing is such an mm -hmm. iconic name. Yeah, but 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 like squadrons or whatever, you know. And then you have mm. like, and then you put more focus on having more different ships, which they have anyway. So that's why they made all this. Yeah, thing. you can even why have Clone Era. I would love to play X Wing or something. See, that's why Legion really Legion is a better name because it's not synonymous with because the five there was Legions in Clone Wars, and then there was Legions in the new in yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the old the old trilogy. Exactly. So, like that, that's fine. The problem, yeah, I see what you mean about X Wing. Armada was fine in terms of a name, and they're still bringing releases out for Armada because they're bringing more Clone Wars stuff into it. So it's like, oh, yeah. But I'd like to play X Wing because I, I like. I think the thing is with Star Wars is like it's definitely not. It's definitely not my favorite sci-fi setting. No, I don't think. Um, I feel like, I really like, hope and like that they don't do the third trilogy because it's literally just going to be like, hey, buy the rebel models and then okay. buy these new stormtroopers. Yeah, yeah. But um, the the spaceship designs in Star Wars, I think, are flat out just, especially the fighters and stuff. Mm. They're mm. just better than everything else. There's they're there's nothing cool. beats them. They're just good. They're just yeah. really really unique. I I love them all. Even like, what, like even have people who complain about the bombers, like, oh, how could they drop bombs downwards? I'm like, because because they have the gravity in the ship make it go down, and then it keeps its momentum. It ain't fucking oh, hard. Imagine brain. having local gravity manipulation, yeah. dumb fuck. Like, also on rails. You can do that. In, it's how like it's literally just if you drop something right, and then it stops going. In, it just keep going. It doesn't doesn't change direction. Stupid, we could not but... sound like bigger nerds. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just, I arguing love about, it. Yeah, I'm just arguing is. about this is how bombs work in Star Wars. I love I love Star Wars ships. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I'd hundred percent I would love to play X-Wing. To be oh, fair, we we've stopped yeah, talking about what games have we tried that are really easy to pick up and just more looking at games because we don't yeah, but... play any other games and we're like, here's games we'd like to try. Because I, I really want to try so Kings what of What are we going to pick up? Yeah, I Star think Legion. Legion isn't a bad option because it's a very low price point as well. Like the two, the starter boxes that they have for the the either the Clone Era or the um or the old Repu or the, not the old Republic, uh the old trilogy, like the original trilogy, are decent. That you get a good amount of models in them. Like you get, a, and with it being a, like as as it was a fantasy flight game, you just get boosters, and each booster has its own rules, and you kind of feed them in. And so on and so forth. And actually, Legion, from what I've been told, on tabletop sim, is actually really good. It yes, actually plays really well. Table. So, like, it's actually like all modded and it all like like sorts things out for you. X Wing as well <laughs> is just fun. I've played a few games of X Wing and I really enjoyed it. I think as well, it very much depends on um, kind of like the stylistic of what you'd like to do. I would love, personally, to try and play World War II games, right? The problem is, is that the only people who play old World, uh, like World War II games are old at men. least 60 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're only making stuff for 60-year-olds, and it's very difficult in terms of, like, for, to play, like, oh, I really want to play, like, a British paratrooper regiment, or I recently watched Band of Brothers, and I want to do the US Airborne. It's like, right, okay, cool. Well, here is the models for it. That's sick. I was like, okay, here's this really complicated how to actually set the game up and how to play it. And it's... It's like, why? Why is there just not an accessible one? And I think the only accessible one that's available is just World of Tanks. Because they brought out miniatures. And it's like... <laughs> See, I started looking at Bolt Action, and then I found myself just looking at Conflict 47, which is then just a futuristic version of World War Two. Yeah, it's using the Bolt Action funny. Rules. It uses the Bolt Action rules. Brilliant! It's yeah. so funny the stuff that they have in there. Yeah. Um. Like, oh yeah, so it's called Max. Also, werewolves. It's like, oh right, okay. I mean, at that they've point, you're just really basically tall. playing. They've got really tall, like British mechs with the World War One like flat. Yeah. Helmet, yeah. Don't they? Yeah. Which I, I love. Really... That. That's fucking cool. 
Which is actually, to be fair, that 3D printed mech that I, um, that we're eventually sorting out because I'm midway through painting it now. Um, one of the person, like the person I actually saw building and painting one did one for their Conflict 47 army because they already had bolt action minis because you can use them for both. And I think that there's another point as well. It's just like, there's so many miniatures games available, but it's so difficult not to just go back to 40k because it's the comfort zone. Because there's like, what? There's oh, Game of Thrones game. got their own the miniatures biggest. game. Yeah, it's also the, uh, the, the Game of Thrones uh, minis game looks kind of cool, but also at the same time looks fairly basic. There's not much variation to it. Uh, let me think what else is there. War Machine and War Hordes. Sorry, War Machine and Hordes. Uh, I've basically been told not to toss that with the 10 foot barge pole because none of it makes sense. Mm. Um, there's things like bolt action. Uh, well, there's World War II games. There's like a couple of sci fi ones. Uh, there's really not like a surprising amount of like. It's, it's trying to have a game with enough depth mm -hmm. to try and keep you engrossed with it and make sure that if you're playing stuff multiple times, that you have true variation. With the the Game of Thrones game, you can basically play one each mission once because they each have a setup, and then maybe you buy a different army, like a different like house. So instead of playing Starks, you play Baratheon. Or instead of playing Baratheon, you play Night's Watch or Lannisters or whatever. And that's basically the level of complexity that there is. So, oh, there's a deck building mechanic. I don't give a shit because the game itself is, <laughs> oh, look, there's a pile of bodies. Oh, let me just, on my movement tray, just around... Oh, I charge. Okay, now we roll some dice for a while. Like, that's it. And even with, like, big battle board games, or, like, war gaming, so Kings of War, it's the same kind of thing. And that is also one of the reasons that Warhammer Fantasy suffered towards the end. Is that it was just... It wasn't... There, it was deep, but there wasn't no enough... tactics. Exactly. It was just, right, you sit in the middle, <laughs> roll dice, done. Get, end of game. And that was yeah. it. But with 40k at least now, Warhammer Fantasy was the perfect game, and it, and GW <laughs> were evil and destroyed it. It definitely didn't sell bad or anything. No, like yeah, the thing is, yeah, I really yeah. liked Warhammer Fantasy for the minimal amount I played because I played dwarves, and I tried to play it so that I was being dynamic. You know, I had to make the fun for myself, which is not a good sign. <laughs> and considering at least what? now, when the old world's coming back, I really, I know for a fact they're gonna fix it. I know it's going to be a much better game when they bring it back. Do you? I hope so. I don't know. I won't trust them for it. I mean, at the end of the day, Horus Heresy, yeah, sure, it's a good game. It's a good game because everyone plays the same army, and it uses the core rules of 7th edition, which was not a good edition. But like, they, they fixed a lot of it, though. Not a no, good they edition didn't. for anybody it's, but Marines. It's a set, so yeah. the game was built for Marines, right? That's yeah. why 7th edition sucked. Mm -hmm. Everyone is playing Marines now. That's why the game works. Everyone's playing the same fucking army. But they also um, did go, I will say and argue in their corner, that they did alter and fix a few things from 7th edition because they were given the chance did, to yeah. update it. And okay, good, but every, every release they do of like chapters of like the story adds like 12 missions and they're all mm -hmm. different and it's really cool. Hey, the missions is cool, but my point is they have so they've made one they've made they, that team has made a single edition of a war game yeah. that they didn't even build all of it right true but then every they like every update make, they release so they make, adds more and fixes right, more right, that's not my point that's not my point they didn't make the core of that game they have not made a full war game which is are fair they, yeah right but so most likely the old one's going to be the same rules from the ground up or are they because they haven't done that before, so that's mm -hmm. one th reason that, that it might not necessarily be like. And yeah. Don't be honest, nothing will be perfect on release. It's just like the scale of how good it is, right? I but... doubt they're gonna completely write a new game for the old world. I think they're gonna yeah. be using at least a base. But considering as well, like the amount of inspiration and the amount of things they overcame out of Total War, I think is really gonna kind of help help their design ethos. And they're gonna have a lot more to work off of now in terms of like the amount of people on that like working on that team side point though it i think in terms of the games that we would want to try and look at are games that have enough enough depth to allow you to try different things and to make sure that every game is different you know like you can play the same six missions but if you can find ways to make those same six missions very different not necessarily it's like okay you've only got fun. And, yeah exactly it's like okay you've only got four like for legion you've only got four armies available to you but 
you can do a lot with those four armies in terms of like which which general do you take what units do you take how do you deploy them this that and the other i think it's kind of the main thing it's it's actually applying some sort of level of tactical complexity instead of just go in the middle and smack each other honestly i just want to paint some new cool models mm. the, the model lines yeah. have to help as well like you gotta find a game think... with a good model line <sighs> I don't. Yeah, I just. I just don't really know many games that interest me outside of the GW stuff. But this thing is, it's Fox weird. Like, I'm not necessarily like a GW fanboy per se. It's not that I'm willing to look at other games. It's just that when I do look at them, I'm like, eh. Yeah. Because yeah, there's, want... there's, yeah. Guild Ball. Guild Ball. I was like, man. I mean, that. Fucking great. Such a and cool it died, world. And then it died like a week Then it died later. Within, yeah, like a month later after I paint, after I got like a sixty quid box uh, for a team that I mm. wanted, painted all of it. Yeah, I've still got my well, team bought, in a box I, back there. Like, know, I'm, not I'm still it. going to play it when I get a chance because I, yeah. I have a mat for it and everything. I I was genuinely like, this is a good game because it is a good game, and there's a community project trying to like basically keeping it going because mm. they just they were literally just like, fuck, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. No, we're gonna keep the game going because it's it good. Had, like, a cool story and like there's so people building. people jumping teams and stuff, right? Yeah. Oh my god, there's so much cool narrative and stuff. Yeah, like um, like you can get a team for the farm, a member for the farmers because it's like somewhere from the stonemason team who retires and has like a leg injury, and so she's got like a walking like stick now and like a trusty dog, and lives on the farm in retirement and how and coaches the t the newer teams, and I'm just like. That's really cool. That's mm. it's like the character writing was fantastic in that game. They just threw it in the bin. Yeah, but I will say this: like for example, Frostgrave is available, and I think Frostgrave is another. One. I think a Frostgrave would be a really cool one to try because it's the same kind of thing as Necromunda. It's a skirmish game, but you build a lot of story around it, and a lot of the I game's wanna... core is building I up your your band of mercenaries and just getting attached to them. And that's the kind of shit I want to be into. And I hope at some point that there are going to be, as annoying as it sounds, it's trying to find those uh, those kind of gems out of the, the sea of other games available and just be like, which, which ones are worth it? And the, I'm, I'm just sad that it may end up just coming back to Warhammer. And that makes me very I, sad. I want an excuse to get an elemental army for Kings of War, but you can't run just elementals, I think, and that is like the very small detail that's making you it. Have wizards. Of... Surely you have to have wizards with it, though, or something. Uh, I think uh, it's like. Depends on the army, though. Because I, I actually have the Kings of War book nature, for that. So it's yeah. a case of. Uh, it's like druids. And like. Uh, the druids don't control the elementals, right. they team up with them, basically. And actually, I've read through the core rulebook for Kings of War. It's actually a really good system. You know, it in the like of just how it works of like your entire the fact that your entire block of unit doesn't disappear until they're old like until ev all the wounds are gone which means they're still fighting at full strength which is also one of that like oh i removed from the back and now i have less attacks how many guys do i have counting them all like you still get to have your nice display pieces which is cool some of the stuff in there is cool there's a there's lacking in terms of like some of the magic -y bits but that's fine because is there's it is still it adding cool stuff to it on paper like does it is it good on paper or is it good in practice i've watched a couple of games and they were cool like they were interesting to watch at least but at the same time it's it's the same thing of it is a it's a you've got trays of dudes fighting more trays of dudes you know in an open field and that's the yeah. kind of the downside to it is if you're into that great if you're not into that well you know yeah it's kind of there's yeah, I, there's the thing you have to think I, about. I prefer my my rats of machine guns. This is also one or, of the reasons I really want to try or Infinity. My block of chariots. Yeah. Because I feel <laughs> like I Inf sorry, what's again? Infinity because you fill the board you fill the board up with a fuck ton of terrain like and that's pretty much like two starter kits worth of terrain is like a full board mm -hmm. right yeah and they're they're all cardstock terrain at least so you can get into it pretty cheap. Yes, you're playing the same list, but because of how the turn is of you have active and reactive turns and depending on like how people like crossing fields of fire and everyone being able to take shots at it it can really change the game in like an instant and that that shit i love and when me and john played it we were like right okay we're gonna get into this of like 
actually having to think about a lot of night not necessarily just kicking the objective where my guys are how do i set up these fields of fire to make sure that i'm protected and if they have to cross over how to counter that or like make sure that my weapons are in range and make sure you're in optimal range so you get the most dice and things like that there are so many layers to that and every game would probably feel quite different it's just that initial think, barrier um, to entry is just weird and i hate it yeah there was definitely um uh, i can I can't remember exactly the moment, but there was definitely points in that game where I had to sort of think, okay, you know, I've got this here, I've got this up, but there's one missing piece, you know, I've got to get this man to the other side of the pitch through all these lines of fire where he's going to get shot at. I've got to just risk it, I've got to go for it. I remember, because he was like, I'm just going to go, no, you moment. said to me, he's just going to go punch that man, I'm like, okay, thinking, oh, I've got three yeah. guys ready to shoot him, this should be fine. And the way that he managed to do his uh, his movement, because you kind of do like steps of movement for when things mm. are declared, and you like when you kind of declare it the first time you would like a guy would see them, then you can react and shoot. You manage to dodge through all those, get to my guy, punch him in the face, and kill him. And I was just sitting yeah. there like, what? No. But it was super <laughs> sort of those dramatic um, narrative moments. Mm. Is I mean, at least for me and you guys, I I know that. Those are our favourite points in, yeah. in wargaming, in so many war games. It's, it's why like we're when always... you pull off the bullshit, a bullshit manoeuvre and bottom ball. It's like that type of... Like, yeah, fight. exactly. Exactly yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's The problem is, it's, at times, there's, just, there's, there's games that just don't allow that. And it sucks because the ones that do allow that are a game that's been out for God knows how long with 40k that to give it that time. A lot mm. of these games have not been out in, as much in comparison. And they are having to swing upwards for attention. I can get that. Oh, God, yeah. But it's also... If you are swinging upwards, you should also think about what kind of inspiration you can take about how some things work. You know? That's, I mean, that would yep. be my kind of thought on it. I think... Ugh, this has gotten um, depressing although, <laughs> Going back to... Um, Mohammed, you did raise a good point there with a... I honestly think one of the easiest things, especially the Games Workshop do, to get into is Blood Bowl. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, super easy. Yeah, team... yes, yeah. I mean, I'd say mainly because you can learn it through the game. It's not, I don't think it's hard to learn, but it's easy to forget things when you play that game. But mm. it's such a casual, fun, stupid game. Yeah. But it has a lot so of depth fun, to it. Cheap. It's good. You mm -hmm. buy it a costs, box what, like and you're 20 done. 20 quid to get full team? Yeah. Oh my god. The, so the newest teams, the Snotlings, uh, the necromantic mm -hmm. uh, the necromantic team and also the orc and human team which I think are going to come out soon because they mentioned the spike 12 magazine for them which will be where their rules are in mm -hmm. uh, but then the core rules are the best value for money teams have ever released because especially necromantic if you buy that box which is like 2250 uh, you've got every single team member you'll ever need except yeah. for stat yep. lights, I guess which are optional genuinely the, the fact that they've like they've genuinely half the price like that's half the price of like saying if you're running Skaven it's, it's great. Mm, it's yeah. so good. Um, but yeah, I genuinely think it's one of their better games now. Like, the new rules mm. are fun. Yeah, it, it's, it's a fun game. It has a lot of dumb shit, which is good. Um, people like to say that it's uh, a completely, you know, luck game and there's no skill involved because it's all bullshit dice. Mm. So those people seem to forget that's every single that's war every, game. It's, it's a dice game. game. It's yep. a dice game. There's def yeah. yeah, there's definitely some strategy involved. Mm. Um, but it's like... It's, it, it's strategy involved... But there are definitely the ability to take risks on stupid dice rolls that are dumb risks. But when mm. they pass, oh my god, it's so fun! Yeah, it's so much fun. <laughs> I mean, our blood bowl, our, our blood bowl tournament is as short-lived as it currently is at the moment. Yeah, was... James, James is uh, currently not computer, not not. Yeah. He's, he's uh, yeah, he's IT enable at the moment. But and then, and then the one of the other people, uh, unfortunately, could just because of the fact that they had next to no time to play, just obviously. Yep understandably yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. forfeited and it's it's sad because like when we were actually getting into that like when we were doing the first couple of weeks of like right let's really get into this and we were all really getting into it and having good like a great time just discussing things there's mm. as, as an act as, obviously there are just just kind of tack onto the wargaming point of in terms of the wargaming as a whole there are not that many games where we have sat down and just talked about even if we haven't played it just the idea of playing it i think the only one collectively with us here we've talked about that isn't warhammer was star wars legion or infinity 
Mm-hmm. I know what we talking about it. playing and not that played, though. What? Necromunda. Oh, imagine playing... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's I still want to play it so bad. Oh, no, I do too. God. I do as well. I've got oh. a fully painted gang, and I've not even put them on socials. What's wrong with me? Yeah, I've not even like, painted mine. Again, because I was obviously... I'm, I was going to basically be the... I think the arbiter of the So basically like the GM for it, right? Yeah. The amount of... That game is so... Like, it, it's it's such a narratively charged game. Sometimes it's detrimental, because they kind of forget to write sp rules sometimes, because they just put the narrative stuff in, mm. which they did for it. Like, the, um, the what's it called? The, uh, the, the enforcers had the ability to handcuff people, uh, and it would, like, work like a coup de grace, but it do this instead. They forgot to say what it actually did. They said, like, it makes, it gives you a plus one to this instead of doing a coup de grace, which meant that you would put the cups on them, and they'd be perfectly fine, but you got plus one to a dice roll at the end of the game. They forgot to say what it actually did. <laughs> <laughs> they just put the narrative text in, nice. and everyone was just like, the fuck? Turns out, it's like a busted ability where you, instead of, like, stomping them to death, and then they go off, they go off safely, but there's a chance to capture them. Mm. Perfect bluff. Mm. That game, like, I, I remember just reading, I read for the, there's like, so, there's like 60-something missions in that game now, I think, set, no, I think it's near 70, mm. but the, the narrative in those missions are absolutely absolutely insane i just remember reading for some of them and i was just like just like it's like this it's stupid it's so this it's such a it's just a fun one i just can't wait to play it but it's yeah. it's definitely one of the ones where uh it takes a lot of reading to get into is the main like necromancer is a messy fucking game oh yeah but so as long books. as someone understands it you, it's not too hard to get guided into it kind of, it's like it, with dnd it's, it's more of an rpg yeah it's like it's with dnd you have one person it's... who reads all the books and then mm -hmm. you will say yep. can i do this and you're like Yes, you can, and here's how. Like, cool, it's, sick. You it's know? a, it's weird because it's like, it's kind of it's a tabletop game. It's, I feel it's very much feels like a tabletop version of like a wasteland isometric RPG, right? That's what it feels like. That's why Frostgrave has got kind such of, a big appeal as well. Which is the same kind of game. Yeah, exactly. Which, and which is similar then to say a game like technically like Waxstone Fortress or um, which, yeah, because they're board games, aren't they? What's the other one called? The the, the, the non Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven, that's what I was oh, thinking right, of. Oh, right, yeah. But those, you're playing one character each, right? Which is why they're more like D&D. &D. Mm. This is, you have your group of boys like an asymmetric RPG, and you're playing against other people who also have full RPG parties. Yeah. And, like, mm. those, the fucking narratives are great. Like, it's so cool. The fact you can capture people as players, uh, like, gang members. Uh, if you're a cult, if you're chaos, you can then, like, sacrifice them for buffs from your gods. Mm. Or uh, if you're in the enforcers, you can sell them off. Like, there's just so much stuff. It's just such a... I just can't wait to finally get around to that one. Skirmish in. games are one of those kind of those secret gems of, like, oh, there's so much you can do in this. There's three games oh. I want to try. I want to try Necromunda. I really want to try that when we actually get the opportunity to, so I'll most likely have the motivation to paint my team. Frostgrave, obviously. I actually own Frostgrave models, and I think it's just the amount of expansions they've released in terms of, like, some of the weird shit that can happen. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you're, you're, the, the entire core of your list is Frostgrave. a wizard and your apprentice, and your apprentice knows your spells, but in the lore, your wizard hasn't told them shit. They've had to guess how the spell works, so they are less likely to cast it. And like yeah. any, all the random and they, shit, and that they can might happen. explode. They might explode. And um, there's one I've really wanted to try, which is Last Days, which is made by Ash Barker, who runs uh, Guerrilla Miniature Games as a wargaming channel. And he was actually nominated for award for one of the best uh, indie games in terms of like because it was a zombie survival game. But it was not just you just kind of go around fighting zombies. It is your gang versus another gang. There are zombies in the way. You need your shit to go back to your base. And at some point, one of the mission is your base gets attacked by another player and you have to actually do all of that setup. There's so many like extra layers of like what could happen and leading on. That's like, right, I'd love to fucking what, play that because you can follow such a good narrative. You know? You can do that in that. Yeah. There's, um, <laughs> the, when I was looking at Necromunda, there's a few things like that as well. That yeah. I was like, because mm, it's, it's a good idea. It's a really good concept having like NPCs mixed in. Oh yeah, narrative is just sick ass. Like, protect the man. You know, and the man kind of does whatever he wants. Yeah, I want to play skirmish games. I just want to play games again, man. I'm well, it's, 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 it's also why, yeah. like, it's also one of the reasons like I really want to play Blood Bowl, right? Mm. Because Blood Bowl 
as the whole thing again where it's more like an rpg because it's all about growing your players from game to game in a league like i don't really care if i win or lose i just want to watch my players get better uh maybe grow some limbs i don't fucking know die yeah, it's um, the progression yeah yes yeah, the progression and the, the thing is as well there's some cool narrative stuff you can do with blood bowl as well others it's not as extreme like you can't have some different you know setup on the pitch every game because that'd be weird right no, but you got your what, you got your linchpin star player who yeah. you've raised but, up since the start of your league yeah you know but like you can have a, a night a night league which is a league set is like an after dark league that's all horror themed and then you get spe- the you, league. yeah you get special um like inducements you can get like dr frankenstein can Oh no, oh, he's called Franken Halfen or something, something stupid. Um, where he can temporarily give one of your players a mutation for the game, but they might die. <laughs> <laughs> he's just stitched on a claw. Love it. Yeah. I want him. I'm sad now. I'm just like, oh, there's all these things that sound really cool. I'm like, mm. it's it's unlikely. Uh, but I mean, carry on. Hopefully soon. One day. One day we can actually, when we can actually fucking play against each other. And I think one of the main motivations is that, considering we're all trying to do this channel together, there will be times where we're like, right, we're going to try this now and just kind of back and forth on it. So, mm-hmm. um, I, I, already, I already have t- two Blood Bowl pitches. So I actually have a Blood Bowl t- uh, pitch because Chrissy got me one for Christmas. Uh, it was and the dwarf I, one. Uh, no, right. she gave me the orc one because I got, oh. uh, she gave me the old orc team. So the I've never, is good. Yeah, the the gouged eye, and I'm like, oh, I've never actually painted really... orcs before, so this is going to be a really cool project. So they they got really tasty rules because they, oh, what is it? It's they they have animosity now against the smaller orcs. Yes. I think it is. Yeah, it's so against they're not like, willing they to pass the ball down other. anymore, yeah. which is really funny because they didn't used to have that, and it's kind of a nerf, sure. But, but it makes more it, sense. It makes them more it's interesting funny, to play. Though. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was like, one thing, because it, it's going to lead into a video as well. I was like, is there any other hobby products that people would want to buy at some point? Because I'm probably going to buy a giant set of paints from Scale 75, which is a, I think they're German? But they're like another main big brand of painting, but they're not really sold in the UK. Firestorm don't sell them, annoyingly. But uh, play for like people like Element Games. They sell them, but then none of them are in stock, so I might just buy directly from the company. And every um, like fucking painting video I've ever seen recently has had them in, and they look like really nice colors, and I want them. I might, I could, I could do a thing on my how I did my base possibly, mm. and go over the stuff I used. Yeah, because you used really some extra, well. you used some extra shit, didn't you? I mean. Like all just the new star stuff. Yeah. Just a little bit. This but like, is gonna look yeah, really bad. Like, what camera, other kind but... of hobby stuff would you end up wanting to buy, you know? I'm uh oh, yeah. I'm thinking of getting those um encounters in a box. That, yeah, that they look earlier. cool. Like yeah. especially just I'm trying a to show it, but it's disappearing too. a little bit probably. Ooh. And the lights probably not bad. Here's one. Bad. What here's here's one that I would love to buy, a nine inch ruler. Because <laughs> half of the fucking rulers for war games are eight inches. Why? It's a it's a weird. Even the forty k ones are eight inches. At least do a multiple of the three, right? Yeah, do them nine because if you're on the other side of that stick, you're in deep. You're out. You're like that's why you're deep striking. Fucking, it's so simple. But they won't. How much million extra pounds does it cost to add an extra inch to a metal ruler? Look, mate, that's a question every man asks themselves <laughs> at some point in their life. <laughs> I can't believe you went there. I'm done. I'm fucking done. <laughs> fucking I mean... hell, Alex. Uh, it was too easy. It was too easy. I gave that to you. I presented that on a, on a plinth. Mm-hmm. Don't present that. You'll get arrested for That's it. That's true. <laughs> you always get told off by your teacher. Uh, I know. Evan, is there any like hobby thing that you'd want to buy that wasn't like new paints or like a new brand or something or like I mean honestly it's just going to be like random miniatures that I like the look of mm. like I've always wanted so I've always liked obviously I've played basically all the Total War games um, I was really into Rome 2 when it came out even though it was awful I still enjoyed it and historically I love that era anyway and yeah. Um, yeah, yes, I've cool. always wanted to buy like Carthaginian warriors from um, oh like the Hail the... Caesar ones 
No, not even that. The Victrix Limited ones. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know what's that scary? So, like, it sucks, right? Because I'm thinking of what I would want to buy if there was if those games existed. They just, they just don't. I But there's so many skirmish game ideas. I'm like, oh, that'd be a cool one to buy. Don't exist. Like, I would absolutely love a skirmish game of, like, medieval knights and stuff. Ooh. So far but, on a, the but, game. No, literally what I'm trying to say, just, just don't talk to us, that's what I'm going to say. I would love to see them in like Piranha style as a miniatures game, as a skirmish game. Yeah. It would just be fun! Presented they're, they're by really Steam nice. Forged Games. <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> <laughs> they probably would be, right? But they, they would look yeah, cool. And oh, speaking of, I guess, actually that's a good point though, right? Um, Overall, pretty much nothing I want to buy at the moment that isn't GW, because I'm currently already in the middle of all of my chaos, which I haven't in the entire army, and I've so far based made a base mm. and have started on the chariot and a horse of one chariot. Well, I have six chariots. I'll just say one of six. One of six chariots. I will say that um, these conversations have definitely re-sparked my interest in getting something Star Wars-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably X-Wing. Yeah. But and I know you can't repaint like, X-Wing, in. though. Well, I mean, you can, but why would you? Yeah, I, I, that's I kind of so X Wing was is appetizing to me because I don't have to paint it because I have other stuff to paint. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> yeah. But like, Steve, yeah, unfortunately, the the Monster Hunter Steve Forge games thing, whatever the fuck that ends up being, is probably the, the my biggest thing on my radar right now because I just get to paint cool fucking dragons and shit, dude. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I need to try and get through a large miniature because I keep staring at that fucking stonehorn mammoth for the ogres, and I keep looking at it, and I can't bring myself to do it. Large miniatures are dead easy. It's it's so much easier than you think it is. The <sighs> this has got so much fur on it though, and it's like uh... fur is so, nice. so easy. So nice you paint. just go, you get a dry brush, you go bam, 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 done. Oh, cool. But I, I sprayed it brighter, white. <laughs> I get an. A... You, you 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 darken the darken the shit out of it. You put coats of washes over it, and then you go back over with a dry brush, and then you do a little bit less of a dry brush. I'm mm. sorted. Again, I, I say this as someone who has uh, I painted the Vim and Vim Lord Corruptor in a day. Oh, not Corruptor. He's just got a name. But my Vim and Lord painted that in a day. Yeah. That's got absolutely covered in fur. I thought that's going to take me like a week, right? And I was just like, oh, it turns out painting big minis is takes about as much time as a normal like small character would because mm-hmm. it's the case that obviously a mammoth is different right because it's um big with multiple small characters on it yeah. but like it's a case of you're not constantly stopped by the details because all the details is it has it has like best way to put it is that it's got the same amount of details and different colored things are just spaced more apart from each other mm. so when you're doing a bit you're just doing that bit but bigger so it doesn't actually take as much time. Yeah, I guess. It would, I, I a lot. But I mean, I guess, yeah, like Armada and X-Wing is like, I could just paint instead of like an X-Wing, I just add it instead of like red, it was orange or something. Like that'd be it. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. That's mine now. Carry on, John. Oh, I d- Put a stripe on it. Put a stripe oh, on it. Oh, I didn't realize Steamforce Games showed what the minis would look like. Mm. Uh, which, which minis? The Epic Encounters one? Yeah. No, the, no, no, no. The... the... The Monsanto ones? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. So John, what were you about to say before we cut you off? I've honestly forgotten. Oh, oh I'm no, sorry. I was gonna say that in terms of painting a big model, I agree that with some things it's a lot easier than you think it's gonna be and it's very daunting to begin with. However oh, God, it took me so long just to paint a, a the battle wagon orc truck. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, well, I mean, just a uh, truck to begin different. with as well. A vehicle so many little bits. Vehicles, yeah, vehicles uh, some big vehicles. creatures are what I'd say harder. It depends. It's it's obviously it all depends on how much color you're adding, right? If every I panel's mean... a different color, like an orc truck, of course it'll take longer, right? But like, if it's a space green tank, yeah, no, like, it's I've, not going to take longer. I, I've it's got a, it's the a head. Hand brick. Dip it. I've got the head for the stone horn. To a point, I'm like, I'm kind of okay with this at the moment. And then like, uh, there's all these extra little itty bitty bits. And one thing that yeah. also doesn't help, because of the fact it's a white undercoat, like, half the paint will just come off the ends, and there's so many ends to it, and you just see little white spots, and you're like, oh, I just gotta try and paint back over it, yeah, and then I never make any fucking progress. Um, so I didn't realise that they actually put the kick, put the Kickstarter information up for the Steamforge game thing, so I'll just put that, and you can have a look at it, because those minis, uh... Right, we'll have a quick look at it, yeah. Hang yeah. On. This is technically the thing I brought to the table earlier, I just forgot. 
that, oh, I didn't know they showed the it. Hunters. <laughs> Let's have a look. Well, so this will be the last thing the... we'll look at before we wrap up. Oh my the, god, okay. These minis are insane. I am so going to, I am going to drop 203 quid on the biggest oh, one. Oh, there's the Raffalos. I bet... Wait, I... oh, wait a second. This looks like it's probably going to play like uh, the Dark Souls one, in a sense. Yeah. Uh, it's probably... Eh, fuck, I don't care if it does, honestly. I don't. It, it looks a little different. Oh, wait, no, you, you did a grid, dude, kind of. Oh, no, it's the nodes. That's how the Dark Souls one played. There was nodes. Oh, okay. And they moved between nodes, and I'm assuming there's going to be some sort of AI deck when you... Draw cards out of, um, to oh, be like, oh right, would. again, do, do this. Do I do this not care side. how this plays. It's straight up those minis. Look at the Kashaladora. That is are genuinely like a dream. I, 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 have, I already know the is literally like because that's like one of my favorite monsters anyway. So, so like, what, all of these. What's the base box got? It's got a great Jagras. It's got a. Squirrel, the fucking lightning squirrel thing. I can't remember what it's called. Zeku and a um, no, that's wrong. Uh, so actually, and an uh, and, and, and a Rathalos, and Angina, yeah. yeah, but the Rathalos obviously that's kind of what you want because you want to paint a pink Rathalos. Yeah, but then the next one's got a Baroth, a Jesus Christ, what's that? It's small. It's oh, pink it's a Jarrett, Jarrett dose, the fucking mud boy, um. Puke Puke and Diablos. Diablos, yeah. absolute classic boy. I yeah, love him. Like a and then they give you. I do they, all, do they all give you more hunters as well? They do. No, oh I think God. I think they're included in the base set. Oh no, they don't. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the base set's got the four, and I'm assuming it's most it, likely because it's expansions after expansions. No, it's because the second image had. Oh, hang four on, no. Each board. Yeah, no, hang on. Eight Hunt, hunters, base then. one's four. Hunters, hunters eight and then twelve hunters, covering coming in April twenty twenty one. And then yeah, and then you've got like the last one's got fucking Nugigante, Tiostra, and Shelladora, which are all amazing. Is that was that um that might even be the Mastro? I think it's Tiostra, but I love these dude. Oh, so, so much. fucking much in here. Oh, you also get wait. Oh, they will. They won't just so on those images. It's the same four hunters repeated. But yeah, if but you know, it's the more. first image. The first image is the greatsword one. The first image of the article. That's not one of the four that they I'm showed. I'm assuming so it's assume... based off of the weapon types. Yeah. Um, like, well, the ones they showed there's a gun lance, and I'm just like, I love the gun lance. Mm. That's a Teostra. Alex. You gotta have one. a sword and shield. Sword and shield, best, oh, course, best, yeah. best I weapon. I thought it would be. Sword and shield is very good. It is the best weapon. I do know just saying. Mean. I just, I just saw an ad on my Facebook for this, and I was like, this is definitely a targeted ad. And they, they know oh. we're talking about them. They know we're talking about them right now. No, no, now. no. I meant like when they when they first revealed it, it was immediately advertised to me, and it was like you want to kickstart this. I'm like, don't, don't. You don't know me. And they like, do. Don't they I do know you. They do I know do. you, and they're listening on this conversation. And I think we should probably call it there before they steal more of our information and uh, and get us to c trying to convince us more about buying this game. So, uh, is there anything else anyone wants to add towards the end? Because we've done a lot of rambling, shouting, and cutting over each other tonight. <laughs> No, does, no, anybody, good. does anybody have a plan for this week of something that they want to paint by next week? Uh, no, because I'll probably be playing too much Valheim. You gotta start, this, man. I can't. Next week. By, by next, next week. week yeah. Actually, to be fair, I painted. I finished hmm. my Torox. I actually painted my. I finished my Torox after I washed the entire thing like an idiot, and I then just went back. This chariot. I then I went back over and uh, actually redid all the blue, uh, and it actually looks really nice now. So there is that. Yeah. Uh, I also uh, I probably I don't know maybe because I bought top ups of paints for my um, well this lid's open slightly uh, for my Tempestus. So I'm probably going to try and finish a squad of Tempestus by next week. Just finish our squad. There you go. There's a, there's I'm a gonna, for you. I'm going to fully paint a plague surgeon. Or this boy. The three printed type boy. Down in Discord, just so we all remember. And we can check them next week. I'm yeah, not, I'm not going to be able to stick to that. I'm just saying that now. <laughs> it's going to be um, difficult. But you, you I have mean, to I'll, try. I'm going to try. I'm definitely going to try and get as close as possible. But if not, I made a lot of progress on, on the chariot last Tuesday. Mm. So I might finish the chariot. Oh, this, I will, this I will be. I will be on this Tuesday. Keep in mind, when I say finish the chariot, I do not mean the units of a chaos chariot. I mean the chariot that the people will be the standing horses, on, not the people on the chariot. <laughs> yeah, it's a set. The chariot is the separate object. Yeah, yeah, mm. that's um, fair. Uh, 
What about you, Judge? I'm going to try. Don't say stone cursed. It's going to be stone cursed. <sighs> say the psychomancer. Should I say the psychomancer? Say the psychomancer, Judge. Do a character with me. I can do that. It was that uh that Necron that he pre-ordered, with the like the digital skull thingy. Yeah, fuck yeah, do that. Yeah. Do yeah. it. It's either I finish the Tempestus or I finish uh the Mech Boy, and I don't know honestly. It's like fifty-fifty. What about you, John? Doing anything? Um, I'm gonna start repainting all my old uh. Uh, the original Blood Bowl human oh, yeah. team that I got in when the 2016 box came out. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm going to be repainting those because my first pass of them was trash. And you've learned so trash. much now. But hey, mm. at least hopefully that uh, side that side gig, uh, when I actually get paid for that, well, when I get the money to give to you for that, then you could spend that on something mm. nice for yourself. Damn right. Now you've definitely made it sound like I sell drugs there. <laughs> oh, no, I meant, I meant you sell ass. Alright, cool. And uh, with that, <laughs> I think I'm happy to end it. Yeah. Sorry sorry to reveal your side hustle. Uh, right, so, uh, this has been episode 7 of Off the Shelf Hobby Podcast. I'd like to thank everyone for watching, everyone for listening. If you are on Spotify or any other podcast platform, thank you very much. Make sure to mm -hmm. follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. All the descriptions are in the or all the all the links are in the description below. My tongue has stopped working, and we will call it there. Any final goodbyes from anyone? See you on Goodbye, Pancake Day. Pancake Day. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Appreciate it. See you next Bye. week.